Hey y'all, I'm taking the cartload, you know where. And I'm happy to say I am growing more diversified things. I actually don't have any red pentas in this load. I have some wild petunias, some narrow leaf sunflowers, privet senna, host to the sulfurs, and look at these little baby sleepy hibiscus I grew from seed. So they're all gonna be heading to the nectary and they'll be there this morning and hopefully this video will go up tonight so if you want any of these go to the nectary saturday morning so it's a bit of a rainy morning here um we had some good rain last night i think it's gonna clear out but there's definitely gonna be the ability to have some gardening time look i was just walking by to go in the house and grab my keys and I saw these sweet babies, and they want to be on camera. So there we go. And I almost forgot these. Can't forget these, so y'all know they're they're from me. Oh, and we're trying something new. Look at these adorable little guys. These are little zinnia cups. You find them. Is that not adorable? These are biodegradable and compostable cups and they got little zinnia plants in them. How cute is that? So we're gonna try selling these at the nectary, see how it goes. It's bad when I come to the nectary to sell my plants and I bring somebody home because you know I need more of these in my garden. Mm -hmm. And I also, I'm bringing four more swamp milkweeds, and there's a big chunky guy on one of those too. Look how cute, he's on a plant now. And this is the other big one. Look at you, I bought plants, and what am I showing you? The caterpillars. <laughs> Look how cute. Anyway, this one's gonna pupate soon, so you know what, why not? Bring him home. Oh no, I just noticed, looky there's a baby. And eggs. You guys, I literally just walked back to my garden to bring my four little swamp milkweed plants back. And on my way out, I found a few golf fritillaries on the Maypop Mansion. And I thought, well, I'll just walk around the side, you know, check my wild lime, see if there's any eggs while I'm here. And I just found on my wild lime, this big guy on a wild lime. I think he was looking for the twine vine. <laughs> Look at all these guys I found. And then right here on my twine vine is this big guy who I'm going to take in because he's about to pupate. It's just incredible. Look at this day. Look at my bald cypress tree. It is a windy, gusty, rainy day, but we're still having fun, aren't we? Oh, the wild lime is stuck to my hair and my jacket. Oh. So, y'all, this is what just happened. Look, it's stuck in my hair. <laughs> Look at how much my wild flower garden is filling in. So, we're just going to go through and peek because some of these guys are blooming or getting ready to beautiful coreopsis tick seed is blooming my white beard tongue is growing tall look how gorgeous look at the green beautiful this little guy right here is my orange cone flower and I wasn't sure it was gonna come back but there it is same with this right behind it my little fringed blue star look it's coming back now this beauty right here doesn't have a sign and i think i recall i moved this it was one that i had bought a while ago before i started labeling them so we'll just have to wait to see who it is something's been eating it though Who's eating you? And then right beside it is the Florida paintbrush. Now this one I've stripped all the leaves off of. 
it keeps getting this powdery mold on it. It's growing beautifully. It's got a little stick stuck in there. So I don't know what to do. I think it's not getting enough sunlight to burn off. Like it's too um, filtered sunlight right here. I'm not sure. Any suggestions? I'm here for it. Then right next to it, the hairy golden aster coming back. Looking gorgeous there. Elephant's foot. This is somebody coming up on their own like from seed I don't know who it is but I'm delighted to have it so when it gets bigger and I can identify it it will get a sign and y'all I absolutely love the rail of sunflower and I thought that it didn't make it but look what's coming up right there I think it's coming back I don't think it gets enough sun either it might be a good idea for me to try and move it now while it's little, where it's going to get more sun. I don't know. We'll see. But I'm just happy to see it's coming back. Y'all, it's so fun coming through here and just seeing how everything's done. Because a lot of Florida wildflowers have a period of dormancy. And so since it's spring, they're all coming back. Some of them stayed green through the whole season. But it's just neat to see that they made it. And they're coming back, and I love that so much. Okay, let's get back to it. This Rudbeckia mollus, look at how big it is. Look at that sturdy stem. So it's very happy. Behind it, look, we've got this blooming and this. This is the white indigo. So pretty. And this is a starry rosin weed. I have a whole little cluster of them in here. And I also have some that I'm growing that'll be showing up at the nectary one day. Here's one that's getting ready to bloom. Then right in front here, we have the round leaf thoroughwort. It's growing kind of, look, it's got that powdery mold too, y'all. That's just got to go. But it doesn't seem to be affecting the plant. Like, the plant's still doing its thing. This is a clump of Rudbeckia herta. Looking gorgeous. Has a lot of buds on it. Look at these two. Oh my gosh, it's going to be so gorgeous. Right behind there is the Dixie Aster. Hammock snake root. Growing back beautifully. There's some more Coreopsis coming up on its own. Tall ironweeds just popping out. A few little leaves. Wavy leaf aster sending up some shoots. This tall guy, I don't know what it is, but I'm loving it. It's some sort of aster, I think. And the one that um, was my favorite, the uh, Georgia aster. Oh my gosh, gorgeous purple flowers. I'll put a picture up here. I did not see signs of it coming back, but all around where it was, there's some little things coming up, which I hope, 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 our little baby Georgia asters. You can see here's my sign right here, but then all around it are all these little guys. There's some here and there's some here. So that will be so fabulous. If these are all Georgia asters, I will be thrilled. Blazing stars. All have their grassy base. The short leaf blazing star, I think this was my favorite one. It needs a little bit of weeding, but it's looking good. Slender blazing star. Look right here, we're blooming. Who are we? Do we not have a tag? We don't have a tag. Here is a 
no name, some, some sort of aster, beautiful. I love the um, bluish tint to the leaves. It's a more of a cool tone leaf color. Savannah Blazing Star. Oh, look. Surprise, surprise. May pop incense coming in <laughs> everywhere. Narrow leaf iron wheat. And you look, you can see it's got a little bit. Let me pull some of that pine bark away from there. <gasps> look at that. Sweet baby coming up. I love this plant too. Actually have two that I grew from seed. They're not going to the nectar either going in my garden, but I will try to grow more. And who's this cute little guy right here? Oh, tall ironweed. So I think that's everybody that I have labeled. But everybody is looking good. Oh wait, Spanish weed daisy. We just looked in on this a few videos ago. Look, look how pretty. Scarlet rose mallows are getting taller every day. My twin flowers looking happy down below. Clustered bush mints growing in. That's my old one from last year. And this is the one I just planted. I have all this stuff coming up in here that I didn't plant. I think, I think these are Elliot's asters. I'm not sure. There could be a combination of Elliot's asters and narrow leaf sunflowers because that's what was in here throwing off seeds. So we'll find out. There's my lizard's tail right there. And then look up the trunk we come, my climbing aster all through my sleepy hibiscus has got new blooms. If you saw the sleepy hibiscus in my garden last year and you loved it as much as I did, I just dropped four of them off at the nectary. But you gotta, you gotta kind of live close by <laughs> to be able to get them. But they'll be there. So we totally left the um, dedicated wildflower garden, but I'm just still showing you my natives. There's my native swamp milkweed patch with a native monarch caterpillar on it. And in this corner that's going to get some work done to it are uh, wild limes, privet sennas, So native plants are such an important add to your butterfly garden because they're exactly what's supposed to be growing in your area. And so all of the pollinators and butterflies that naturally live in your area will want to come to your garden. And then you throw in a few extras like zinnias, pentas, and Mexican sunflowers, and you're good to go. And there's the red trash can which means if you enjoyed this little tour through the Florida native wildflowers that are in my garden and a little trip to the nectary, tap the like button. If you want to learn more about butterfly gardening or just hang out with me, subscribe to my channel. If you want to support my channel, join the milkweed crew and I have one more. Absolutely. No, two. I have two more absolutely adorable things to show you. First is right here in front of me. Remember my little cardinal friend? Well, she is spending more and more time in her little nest in my wild lime tree. And um, I don't think she's laid eggs yet. I don't know, I don't know that whole process. I'm learning through observation, but I'm gonna stay back and just try and zoom in so you can see her, but we're not gonna do anything to invade her privacy or her space. But I just love that she's right there in her little nest beside my chair. I sit in my chair and she's sitting in her nest and we're just out hanging out together in my garden. <laughs> it's fabulous. Okay, so you can see right there is the little cluster of the nest. So I'm going to zoom and hopefully you're going to be able to see her little beak. See her little orange? Well, thank you, Breeze. Thank you, Breeze. 
Let's zoom a little more. See her little beak, her little orange beak? She like fits very well in her nest. Like her little head's the only thing you see popping up. So she's absolutely adorable. I am loving. <laughs> I am loving having her right next to my garden chair. I'm just getting to observe like the behaviors and and just all of it. I love it. And the last thing that I want to show you is somebody new who's been added to my lepidarium. And of all things, my husband found this little one. How many times am I out here looking, looking, looking for caterpillars? But he was out with the dogs last night and he found this sweet little one who is in the lepidarium. Let's go see. It's what perfect timing. Somebody is eclosing. Well, I came in to show you our new friend, so hang on a minute. All right, there we go. Look at how chubby the abdomen is. That's where all the fluid is right now that is gonna get pumped through the veins in its wings. I think it's a male. And um, then they will stretch out. See, its proboscis is split in two. It's going to work it up and down and it kind of zips up together. So it's got all these important things that it has to get done kind of immediately after it closes. It's got to zip up its proboscis, fill out its wings, and it has to hang so the wings can dry as gravity pulls them downward. If this um, butterfly were to say fall and it couldn't get back up again, then its wings would dry just like they are now because gravity wouldn't be able to pull them down to hang straight and uh, it would never be able to fly. So I'm gonna show you some other things in here and then we'll come back um, to see how this one's doing. Hanging out on the Maypop is a monarch. It closed yesterday, uh, but it's a little bit too windy out today, so we're just gonna hang out. It's supposed to maybe clear out later today and the sun come back out, I hope, because this is a front moving south. Here's a few golf fritillary caterpillars. And then the same for this little golf fritillary butterfly. It closed yesterday just hanging out waiting for better weather okay y'all look what's happening here see this golf fritillary chrysalis is not happy and you know why because there's a little monarch caterpillar like a little one crawling on it on the back so I'm gonna get it off <laughs> it's okay it's okay I'll get it I'll get it be still <laughs> the drama in the lepidarium. All right, so this little one, I don't know what it was doing up there because I've got lots of milkweed plants in here, but we're going to go put this one on a milkweed plant and then this guy can get back to the business of becoming a butterfly. <laughs> All right, and we're still making progress here. And this is the new guest, a sulfur caterpillar on privet senna, host plant. Oh, I just dropped four privet sennas off of the nectary. <laughs> you want to get these guys? Go get some of those. Y'all, I have a hard time. Like, there's a, a, several sulfur butterflies here, um, the cloudless and the orange barred sulfur. And... I don't, I don't ever know. I just call them all sulfur butterflies because I also read somewhere that they can um, interbreed. So some things can be a cross between two. So on my videos, they're all sulfur butterflies. I mean, when I actually ha see the butterfly, um, I can usually tell the orange bard if it'll sit still for me versus the cloudless. I think there's a clouded sulfur too. 
such perfection. This is the monarch that he closed yesterday. Just letting you watch it a little bit while we're waiting for the newly eclosed one to just work its wings a little more so I can show you the final result. This beautiful golf fritillary is going to be pupating soon. See, look at how much progress it's made. It's trying to climb up and get a more secure place to hang. There's a little baby zebra longwing caterpillar and the eggs that I brought in. You can see how much the abdomen has shrunk since it first eclosed. It looks like it's still working on its proboscis as well. It seems to not be gripping well. It just slipped off of the um, metal because it is real slick. Not a lot of friction there. So I'm going to move him up to the top because they really can hold on well to the netting. That is up there. And look at how straight those wings are now. You can see the little patch right there, that little spot. That's how we know it's a male. All right, we're gonna let this beauty be. And um, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.